I bought this supercharger on Marketplace for 200 bucks and we're gonna throw it on our Baja Miata. $200 is even cheaper than the Amazon supercharger that just blew up the last car. This one is a name brand and it's made for a Miata. It is full of twigs though. We literally blew up three motors in the last 30 days. Did we just blow up the motor? Oh no. Zero compression in cylinder four. I can't blow up a fourth. Literally I'll actually cry on camera. And the internet doesn't want that. Nobody wants Gavin to cry. Let's tear this thing apart, and get the twigs out of it, then we'll throw it on the car and hit the dyno. That's unbelievable. <laughs> there was leaves coming out of the intake, so we're gonna pop it off and see what's all in, in our rotors. We got one twig out already, so <laughs> that's a baby twig. You do understand that there's supposed to be zero twigs of any size inside of a supercharger. You know that, right? Right here, there's a little bit of sticking, so we have to figure Figure that out. If, if it's actually a literal stick or uh, if it just needs a little oil. We'll get it cleaned out and running just like new-ish. Now here's the real question. Do we think the Amazon supercharger or this will ultimately make more horsepower gains? I honestly think it'll be about exactly the same. About that 30, 30 horsepower. I guarantee it'll be more reliable than the Amazon one. Power wise, it honestly actually looks a little bit smaller. So it might be Less. I'm, I might go like 25. My assumption is this will make the exact same number. This is a little smaller. I bet it's designed better and like flows better. This is a way smaller pulley, so that'll help. Well, nothing's coming out. Hmm. So it's possible that there just isn't any oil in there and they already drained it? Or more likely he didn't have any oil in it to begin with and then filled it with sticks. Yeah, the old method, the old stick <laughs> method. The classic rat factory. We don't use oil in our superchargers, you guys know. I'm gonna keep trying to clean this thing up and hopefully unveil more of its secrets. I started popping the nose cone off and we do have oil in there. It's not the prettiest looking oil. Oh yeah. Dude, did you just blast out some farts or is this the supercharger? It stinks in here. It's legit the stinkiest oil I've ever smelled in my life. This is what was in there. That's how much oil came out, huh? Yeah, so they definitely had drained it. There's no chunks or anything. The gears are in great shape. I just don't understand why it stinks so bad. Yeah, no, I've never in my life smelled oil like th it's worse than gear oil like this is horrendous right i mean even the china ones weren't this bad yeah so next step i'm trying to get uh this part of the in like the actual intake off there's a decent bit of stuff in there i think it's brake clean time just get a little bit of that in there gross it is starting to spin way better you can see how much junk is in there dude unbelievable amount of crap in there. Oh yeah, look at how much better that looks. Holy smokes, yes. This thing's gonna be brand new. We might need a couple more cans of brake cleaner though. Look at all that. That's yeah. way better, dude. Sounds better, that it looks is. better. That honestly turned out phenomenal. Spins great, there's no hitching going on. Hopefully that's enough of a clean for our purposes. In all fairness, it's about to go into an off-road car. It's not gonna be kept perfect. All right, so here's a comparison of the $300 Amazon China SC14 versus the $200 Magnuson. So this is much, much smaller, but it does have a smaller pulley. The other difference is this is uh, like a corkscrew rotor, like where it's kind of corkscrewing through like that versus this was perfectly even. Doesn't so, no, this thing's locked up like it did tax fraud. This will be uh, actually really exciting test. You guys, we are gonna hit the dyno, so make sure and stick around and we'll get actual numbers. I don't know if the 30 inch tires affect our dyno runs. I'm, uh, I'm assuming they will. We'll do the exact same thing we did for the red car, which is a base pull without it plugged in, and then we'll do one with it plugged in. And it's just how much horsepower it adds. I think it'll be right, right even. I bet it'll be right around that 30, 30 uh, horsepower. Well, it's exciting either way. I, I'm, this thing with 30 extra horsepower is going to be significantly better, and it's already the coolest car I've ever owned. Let's throw the supercharger on. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> first steps first, I gotta take this bracket off. Now it's gonna bolt on there. I've got one mount that I have to fab and that'll fit right into that slot there. And as soon as that's done, this just bolts on. 
That's what's nice. This is actually designed for a Miata. I don't have to come up with a bunch of complex stuff. That's what he says. We'll see how that goes for him. <laughs> Honestly, anything is better than the nonsense I've been dealing with. I've done three versions of the same supercharger in the last, like, I don't know, month? <laughs> This is the only one that's actually made for a Miata. It's gotta be easier. This is our bracket that holds everything on to the motor. That just slides like that. Now this kit is actually for a 1.6, which is why there's something there that isn't for us right now. Basically, I'm just gonna have something that bolts between these two pieces on our exhaust, comes up and has a little bolt hole ready to go. Let's make an off-road car out of a Miata, he said. It'll be so fun. I forgot that that bench was covered in oil. Yeah, I was wondering what the stink was. <laughs> Oops. Now, I just gotta drill that guy out. piece of steel in the way so you don't drill into your engine technique. I like it. Classic Gavin. Dylan would have just poked a hole in his block. <laughs> That's not true. We can actually put the supercharger on for the first time. See how it fits. Quite literally as close to the motor as it could be. <laughs> One time I wanted to just be like, oh, you have room to work. Not on a Miata. Next time we'll get you a Corvette or something. Ooh, that'd be fun. Little long travel solid axle Corvette. Pre-runner build. It's already got an LS. We won't even have to motor swap it. I don't know. If you guys want to see that, uh, leave a comment. This is a pretty cute looking little supercharger. I like it. I mean, it at least fits, which is more than we can say about literally every other one we've attempted. We've come to Gavin's favorite part of the day where he gets to cut holes in my car. We tried every single scenario of trying to feed air to this supercharger and none of it works. None of it fits because it's supposed to live right here. We're gonna just poke a hole right there and then we'll have the intake behind the dash because there's no dash or anything back there anymore. So. It's perfect for sucking in some beautiful, crisp cabin air. Honestly, it's probably the best move because it'll keep everything clean. Like that's the, probably the cleanest sure. part of the car. The roofless convertible is gonna be so clean on the inside. <laughs> it's cleaner than the under the hood, I guarantee yeah, it. Probably, that's fair. Is this what they talk about when they say we're gonna change your cabin filter? This is exactly <laughs> what it is, yeah. This hurts my heart. I don't wanna do this. I want everyone to know that's going on the record unless it doesn't because Dylan edits it out. Ah. Oh my God. I hate this so much. You know, it's pretty serious if he puts on the safety glasses. I know, and I got shoes, pants. This is a big deal. And there's nothing on the other side of that, is that correct? That is true. There is literally nothing back okay. there. That is trash. That is very hot and it's on my face. And you do a little dance. Hey, nice. so now our air filter will be on the other side of all that. Boop, right through there. We know you guys love to watch the oil go in the supercharger, so here it goes. I think what you meant to say is they like to not watch it because even though we're making a whole stink of it, someone's going to comment, we didn't put oil in the supercharger. So, to you I say, enjoy being chaos. I think the supercharger goes in for the final time, so we'll show everyone what I did. We've got a custom made little bracket that bolts onto our header. Uh, we put this heat shield back on based on how much I had to hammer it. I'm not sure we were supposed to, but it's on there. It seems like we should give this every chance it has at staying cool. We've kind of saved a pretty critical detail for the very last step. Do we have the right size belt? It came with the kit, so I'm assuming it's the right size. That might be a bit of an assumption 
with our luck. <laughs> yeah, the belt is always a huge issue in our supercharger shenanigans. This belt is definitely wrong. <laughs> We've got so many supercharger belts hanging around, I can't be 100% certain that that was the correct one from the kit. The belt thing is a huge problem because you go to the auto parts store and tell them you want a specific length belt and they look at you, oh, what, you're making model. It does seem like it's gonna be too small. We got the right belt on there. All it's left to do is fire up and see if it works. All right, here goes nothing. Will she fire up? She fired up, woohoo! The intake in the car was probably not a good idea. That's insanely loud. We find ourselves here again. Supercharged Miata, front of the driveway, about to see what happens. The supercharger whine is honestly crazy loud. I thought this would be more like the Previa one. This sounds more like the Timu. It's like, eh, it's yeah. super, super aggressive. All right, we're gonna take it very, very easy, I promise. I'll believe it when I see it. That's frustrating for the one part of this that is supposed to be like a factory thing. We're sure dealing with a lot of problems. I just don't know what we can do that's going to stop that from happening. We've done some redesigning on our setup. We were thinking that it might be popping off the outlet because we don't have a blow off valve and there's too much pressure because for some reason the uh, recirculating valve in the supercharger is not working. It's possible because we decided to do the throttle body in the stock location rather than relocating it. That's just the way we did it. So we got a blow off valve right there. Fire it up and see what happens. Take whatever this is. It sounds way better. was our problem, uh, or at least the main problem, is it just wasn't letting any air out when letting off the throttle. We didn't blow the charge pipe off, so that's a win. All right, our first successful lap around the neighborhood, maybe one mile <laughs> after uh, days of work, we finally got it. So do some checks and see uh, if we need to fix anything and then do more tuning. As you guys can probably tell, we did a little bit of off-roading. After the fiasco with the three superchargers on the red car, we wanted to make sure this one was really dialed in, so we've been doing a lot of testing, and it's been going awesome. But in that testing, we discovered that we need new motor mounts and an intercooler. We're heading to the dyno very soon, so we can see how much power this $200 supercharger actually makes. It's that time. It's final assembly on our new intercooler piping. This bad boy is gigantic. Unlike the red car, this is a real intercooler. It's heavy, it's large, and it's in charge. That means we have no space for it. So, we actually have to do all of our intercooler piping first, then this thing sneaks in ever so. Oh, man, it's, it's a really close fit. Like, it's crazy how close this is. I mean, you can see it's, we're talking literal millimeter worth of clearance. The final step is to actually weld these brackets on. From here on forward, the radiator has to come off if we want to mess with the intercooler. So hopefully we don't have to mess with the intercooler. So it's a semi-permanent intercooler install here. Yeah, 100%. We can absolutely take this off whenever we need to if we take the radiator off. So hopefully it's not an issue. In fact, the only reason we would have to touch it is if someone hits another wall. <laughs> what? <laughs> One concern that I do have is airflow to our radiator. Obviously this is kind of uh, blocking it and then the uh, skid plate down here doesn't allow really much of anything to get to it. We did try and leave as much of a gap as humanly possible. So there's at least some airflow going. When you're working with a large aftermarket radiator, a large intercooler, and a small car, these are the problems you got. We got all the lines plumbed. Now it's time to permanently install the intercooler. Something like that. I'm not gonna go crazy with these welds in case we do, for some reason, have to take it off. 
But it also has to be strong enough that when Dylan jumps the car, it doesn't break off. So kind of a, a medium sized weld on these bad boys. It'll hold next time we hit a jump, and that's what's important. That's structural now. But we should be good for the dyno. This is gonna be wild. I'm stoked. The time has come to dyno the Baja Miata. What do you think it's gonna do? I'm sticking with 20. 20 extra HPs. 20 extra HP. That's probably a good guess. I wish we could beat the Amazon, but I unfortunately don't think it's gonna happen. Did some tuning runs and stuff this morning, and we were only about 3 PSI, so yeah, yeah, that 20 is probably about right. I hope we can be wrong. And uh, I don't think 20 is the limit. I think just 20 is where we're at. So the intercooler did drop the intake temps 100 degrees. Oh my God. From 200 down to 100. So that's insane. But the coolant was like 240 that's <laughs> plus. Not ideal. Even on the highway. So we got some checking on that. But let's get her into the dyno. All right. Every time I see this car, I like it a little bit more. This thing gets used more than just about anything you could imagine. I said 20, you never actually said. <laughs> I never said a number. 20 is probably about right. I hope for 30, but I don't, I don't think we'll get there. Yeah, I don't think uh, so either. My butt dyno is not that calibrated, but uh, it does not feel like a lot. But I'll go 30 just for, for hopes. Yeah for a little drama. Just like last time, we're gonna do a base run without anything hooked up. So we're gonna disconnect the charge pipes, get a base run, reconnect everything, and see what the difference is. The tires and gear ratio are gonna do weird stuff, I think. So I'm, I'll go 100. I'm gonna guess a little over 100. I'll go 101. Okay, <laughs> price is right. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Bear? Less over than 100. 100. <laughs> yeah, because uh, these things stock, they're in good shape. You know, there's a lot of guys bring them in for the road course yeah. races. So they'll make 110, 120. If they're really good, they'll make yeah. 120. You gotta turn that big monster uh, truck tire. That fair. robs horsepower. That's fair, yeah. Imagine we put Bigfoot tires on it. How much horsepower did that take? Oh! Oh, Last one I went high, this one I'm going low. All right, fair enough. If you guys don't know, Dyna Pros here in Denver, look them up. These guys are awesome. Bear has been a treat every time we've worked with him. So if you want to know how fast your car is, this is the place to find out. That was crazy. <laughs> 81. Oh my God. That's unbelievable. <laughs> well, now the question is, can we break 100 with the supercharger? All right, it's time to test it. Let's see where we're at. 115. 115, so that's 35 right there. Yeah. That's not bad. Let's see if we can play with it. 14 and a half to one, I mean, when we're up at max power range. We need to be down here at like 12. Yep, tweak some numbers, see if we can make some more power. I'm pleasantly surprised. We added a bunch of fuel. I don't know, we're gonna send it. Let's see if we can get. And 17 I think was our final number starting from 81 so 37 horsepower that's not bad that's more than we both thought it's way more than I thought yeah, I'm excited to actually try it out on the track thank you guys for watching stay rad